You may have noticed that as you sketch paths and profiles, small icons appearing around your sketches. These are referred to as constraints and fusion. Other CAD programs will refer to these as relations. Essentially, a constraint is applying a rule or a restriction to a path or paths, points, or even the origin. For an example here, this line at the bottom here, that's always going to be horizontal as I've set that constraint apply application there. This line here is always going to be perpendicular to the bottom line. So it's always going to be right angle because that once again that constraint has been applied. It is very important to have constraints for when you're designing, especially if you're making changes and updates to your design as you're most likely going to do. And so these constraint rules will still apply. It will mean that the design won't become broken because everything sort of relates to one another. I like to think of constraints as similar to applying formulas in uh, cells in Windows Excel. So let's get started with our constraint template. Please go through and download and open the template displayed on the screen. This is available in the video description. We're going to go through and apply the following constraints to the paths and points provided. The constraint toolbar is available just at the top here under the sketch uh, workspace. We're going to focus on the horizontal and vertical first. So I'll zoom in there to make it fill the screen. And so this should be familiar. The path will become either horizontal or ver vertical. It will automatically snap to whatever is the nearest and an icon will appear. So we apply horizontal and vertical and you can see the icon appear there. This one will go to horizontal um, because it was closer to it in terms of degrees and same thing with the vertical. Moving down, uh, so now we can no longer, if I go tr through and try and change this, I can change the length, I can change the position, I just cannot change the angle. Next up is a coincident. And so a coincident will lock a point or an origin. So it can lock and join points or a number of points to the path. It's essentially joining paths and points together. So if we're applying whatever selected first, it will apply the uh, constraint to that coincidental to that line. And so therefore I can change, I can move this around, but it's always gonna be locked to that other path as we can see. This one, I'm gonna select that endpoint coincident to the other endpoint, and then therefore they're going to always be joined now. Ah, uh, whoops. Try and just move that. There we go. Moving on down, a tangent. Uh, tangents are great, and these should be familiar to you from the sketch video in the playlist where we apply tangent circles and tangent arcs. Use this to apply a smooth curve to an arc uh, from a path and along with a circle. So it's essentially aligning the widest point to the path. So we can be selecting the circle first, applying a tangent to the path. Therefore, they didn't join, but if I try and move this, it's always gonna align with it. And same thing if I try and scale that up, they're gonna be linking or connected at that point. So even if it's not aligned with it, it's always going to align that degree. Moving down, we've got equal. Another one that should be pretty easy to understand, essentially applies an equal length. Uh, so if we want this line to be equal to this line, I'm going to select that first, go to equal and select the other line. And so therefore they're always going to be equal to. So if I try and update, whoops. Maybe I'll change this one. There we go. If I make one larger, it's going to make the current, the other linking uh, form larger as well. Zoom out and go to column two. And we'll focus on parallel. 
So parallel should also be familiar with this term in that the two paths are going to be always equally distant, essentially going to lock uh, the angle. So if we want this line to be parallel with that line, selecting parallel, selecting those two, and they're never going to converge. So we're going to be able to change the distance between each one, uh, change the length, but then never, we cannot change the angle as you can see there. Collinear, somewhat similar to parallel, uh, but hopefully this demonstration clarifies uh, those differences. So collinear is a constraint that's essentially going to align the paths along a continuous path. Um, somewhat similar to the alignment tool in Adobe programs. And so we can apply select a path, uh, collinear, and to another path. And so they can then be enlarged. Uh, whoops, keeps on wanting me to move them. There we go. It's going to be a, along the, the path. Um, and so they, they can be separated apart, which it can be really helpful in aligning that way. Moving on down, we've got perpendicular. And so perpendiculars, the paths are always going to be 90 degrees to one another. This can be better applied than the vertical and horizontal in that if the path angle is altered, it will always alt, um, update it so it's always perpendicular or right angle. So in this case, we'll make this path perpendicular to that one. Um, and so also take note, if you're selecting certain points, certain constraints won't be available. So some constraints have been applying to points, some constraints are going to be applying to a whole path. So therefore, I'm going to go perpendicular to this line. And so therefore, they're always going to be perpendicular. Hopefully I can change that. So I can no longer change the line, always going to be at that 90 degree. Moving on down, we've got midpoint. Uh, we would have multiple to go through and do midpoint. And so midpoint is similar to a coincident constraint. Um, however, it is applied to the midpoint of the path. So we're going to go through, I can select both paths here, and then I can go midpoint, which is this icon, and it will snap to the midpoint. So if I make now this path shorter, it will update. And so I can also apply midpoints or points to paths. So it'll always be joined at that midpoint. Same thing, update. There we go. Only a couple more to go through and complete. And that's cocentric. Um, cocentric is essentially aligning the center points or marks of arcs and circles. So we've got a center point for the radius of this arc, and we've got the center point. Uh, for the radius of this circle. So we can be selecting both of them and then applying a cocentric. And you can see now they're overlapping. So that can be really handy, especially for arcs and circles. And that's what it's really only applied for. The last one is I'll be using sparingly. Essentially, it locks um, the points and paths in place. And so this is really useful for splines because splines are really hard to control. However, uh, yeah. It's not one you're going to be using quite as much. And so what you can be doing is uh, locking two points and then going into fix or unfix and just take note that it turns it into a, a green highlight and that notifies it's now uh, fixed into place in terms of this path is along with this uh, point. So the point, the remainder of that path will be able to be moved. Uh, whereas this won't be able to be moved at all because I've essentially locked it into place. That hopefully encompasses majority of the constraints. There's a few others um, in terms of symmetry, whereas that's going to be pretty similar to when you're creating your mirror and your circular patterns. Uh, they're going to be generating those symmetries within there. Thanks for watching.